This is a movie about lost wax casting, so let's look at wax carving first. These are carving tools. They're like dental picks. They're double-ended, see? Carving wax comes in a number of different colors and hardnesses. This is blue carving wax. It's rather brittle, but it takes detail very well, polishes up real nice, and it's what I had on hand. This piece has been prepared for the Paul Stave. See? It's axe-shaped. You can work wax hot, heating the tools in a flame, or you can work wax cold. We're working this cold. I'm using a spoon-shaped tool to carve out the fullers, grooves on either side of the mid-rib. Fullers lighten a blade, yet retain strength. Wax files are coarser than regular files. Now down the other side. Okay, now the carving is done. You can see that nice midrib. I've welded on the tail with a hot pointed tool. You can see the weld. This is molding wax. It's very soft. Here is the finished model. You can see the flanges, the stop bar and the loop all made of different colored molding waxes. All the characteristics that make a Paul Stave axe. The tail is very thin for mounting in a wooden handle. Now it's all sprued up for casting. You can see I've mounted it on an angle. Otherwise it would be too tall for the flask. You need at least a quarter to a half inch from the top. And here is the perforated flask for vacuum casting. We're going to put it around the model and fit the rubber base onto the lip of the flask, like so. And now we put the rubber sleeve around the flask to contain liquid investment. Investment is a special kind of plaster which contains refractory material to withstand high heat. About four pounds of investment. A measured amount of investment to a measured amount of water, about seven to eight hundred cc's, and we mix it up good in a flexible rubber bowl. Flexible so that uh, we can crack out the excess once it is hard. Now, when you mix stuff up like that, you entrap or entrain lots of air. We're going to vacuum that out. So we put the bowl in the dome, turn on the vacuum, and hold down the flanges for a good seal. Watch that little clunk. Bam! There it goes. It's on its way to an almost complete vacuum. 27 inches of mercury. That's a vacuum. That stuff is going to start boiling at room temperature. Meanwhile, I'm going to joggle the sprung table to make sure all the bubbles rise, get all that in. Then we'll scoop the excess back into the bowl. Now I'm going to fill the flask and vacuum it again. When the investment sets, it will form a rock-like mass with the wax model inside of it. There it goes, that stuff's boiling, all the air's coming out. Here's an overview of the casting tape, the melter, the vacuum, and the kiln. Here's the melter. It gets plenty hot in here. It goes around 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. These are the graphite crucibles, in which the metal is actually melted. That must be the place. Here's the vacuum, the vacuum machine, which you've already seen in action, and the kiln, where the wax is actually lost.
The wax is burnt out of the flasks at about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it's burnt out, it leaves a space which is a perfect negative of the model. The sprue leaves a channel by which the metal can enter. And here is the bronze, the stuff of dreams and nightmares. This bunch weighs about 187 grams. And here it is in the melter. Red hot. We'll come back later. It's later, eh? Look in here. Liquid metal. About 400 grams. We're going to degas it with the dry stick method. Chopsticks are perfect, they're kiln dried. What it means is the combustion forces out all the trapped gas like CO2 and nitrogen. Casting flask is about 1100 degrees. That's why I'm breathing so hard. Place it in the well, turn on the vacuum. Get the crucible from the melter. Pouring bronze. Look at the heat coming off of that thing. The closer. See it shimmy? Well, it's cooled now to what we call black hot. Let's dump it into cold water and blast all that investment off it. And here, see all that action? And here is our beautiful bronze casting of a Paul Stave axe. See the sprue, the loop, Flanges. Big sprue on the base. Here's the tip. Let's see what it looks like finished. That's pretty. And here is another, mounted in an oak branch handle. There's your Paul Stave, style of the 14th century BC.